Ian Clark, so how did the project regeneration come about then? In 2016, I started a documentary project about coal mining in South Wales and investigated one of the few remaining working mines, Tower Mine near Hewan. The mine had been producing coal for 200 years for most of the time from a traditional deep mine using a winding tower and underground shafts. Oh, that's a long time. When it was closed by the coal board in 1994, the miners staged a successful buyout when 239 miners each paid £8,000 from their redundancy money to keep it operating. In 2008, the underground mine closed for good and the direction changed to surface mining. This started in 2011 and massive construction vehicles were used to dig the coal from the ground. In 2016, five years into this scheme, I came into the picture with my idea for a documentary. At the time, Tower were supplying coal to fuel the power station at Aberthaw. My final outcome was a photo book entitled Coal, the last train from Tower to Aberthaw. The title came about because Tower had lost the contract to supply coal six months after I started the documentary. Tower surface mine stopped supply on the 24th of February 2017, when the last coal train arrived at Aberthaw Power Station. This first book documented the journey from machinery digging the coal out, then loading 1,400 tonnes of coal onto each train, then photographs of the rail journey, including the final 10 trains in February. The last few shots show a train arriving to be unloaded onto the conveyor belt to the furnace and the power control panels showing 530 megawatts of power from each of the three generators at the station. At that time, the power station was supplying half of the electrical power for Wales. For my final year degree exhibition, I decided to continue with the coal theme with particular emphasis on regeneration. Tower have been carrying out landscape regeneration since 2017. So what was it like doing the project then? Because this sounds a very interesting follow on project from the, uh, the first one that you did. I think my major concern was that the regeneration scheme had started more than two years previously, and it was likely to continue for many years after my coursework finished. Consequently, I was only going to catch a slice of the scheme. Luckily, my earlier project showed some images of how the landscape was before 2019. I started the current project in October 2019 by research researching regeneration projects, including the 1985 Photo Galleries Valleys project, and also visiting museums and galleries in the area to get some ideas. My main interest, however, was getting out, making pictures, documenting real life. After visiting the Aberdare Museum on October the 15th, I called into the tower surface site and spoke to Tony Schott, the manager. After talking with him and showing my earlier work, he decided that documenting the regeneration process was a viable option and right. asked if I wanted to see around the site. The regeneration work mainly consists of returning the landscape to its original contours after 5 million tonnes of coal have been removed between 2011 and 2017. In all, I did 12 photo shoots, mostly of the work being carried out on site, but also some portraits. I had to pick my days to visit because in the winter, it was generally cold, wet and windy up there on the edge of the Beacons National Park. Even if I checked the weather forecast, it wasn't always accurate and I didn't always get the planned images. Yeah, it can be quite uh, rough up there at times on the edge of the beacons. So so what were the problems then with this? It sounds a pretty hardy uh, documentary type project to do, Ian. Yeah, apart from the weather, of course, the main problem from the start was not getting the access I needed to the 625 acre site. I wasn't allowed to walk onto the site because of safety restrictions associated with construction vehicles driving around from dawn to dusk. 
On some of the shoots, I was able to walk around the site perimeter, but I really wanted to get closer to the action. To help me, the site manager drove me around when he wanted to view the work in progress. I remember on one occasion you, you accompanied me. The main constraint here was that we weren't allowed to leave the vehicle, so I could only shoot out outside the vehicle windows. Mm -hmm. Even though these were often dirty and smeared, it did provide some interesting shots. It's a documentary project then, obviously, but what do you, what's it you're trying to communicate in these images that we're seeing, Ian? I was attempting to show how the main site had been altered by the regeneration to bring the landscape back to its original contours after 200 years of coal mining. I also wanted to emphasize the gritty nature of the coal mining business, even after the coal had been mined out. Of course, this is a long-term project and I can only show part of the regeneration phase. Two years work has already been done and much of the landfill completed. I also wanted to produce portraits of people I had met that had had a major influence on how I was able to complete the project. I have only been able to produce three portrait subjects, but had to organize three more before the recent coronavirus made me housebound. One portrait I managed was Tony Schott, and he introduced me to Glyn Roberts, the organizer of the Mine Buyout Group in 1994. I also had a lot of contact with Dan Jones, the chief engineer and surveyor on site. There is far more regeneration work to be completed after my degree project has been done, as well as the landscape work, a zip wire scheme has already been approved and groundwork started. A planetarian scheme on the site has also been discussed. So you've got a snapshot then of this in a particular period of time of the project, but other exciting things possibly to continue doing in the future. Finally, Ian, what was it uh, that you would say you'd learnt from this uh, particular project? I think my main learning has been that you must be flexible when carrying out a long term project. For various reasons, my end point has been completely different from my starting objectives. Most of the reasons could not be foreseen, and I am fortunate in having the ability to make most of the changes without too much trouble. I did learn a few new skills, though. The greatest change was in the nature of producing a virtual exhibition instead of the planned graduation exhibition at the university. The other major influence was that although I had planned my schedule, I could only get out to do my final shoots and meet three of my portrait subjects. Thank you. Ian Clark, thanks for sharing your project with us today and uh, we wish you well with your uh, future photography in this area. Thank you, Ian.